Drone pilot Joe Tegmeyer recently captured some interesting new Gigafactory Texas updates, including more 4680 battery manufacturing equipment deliveries, installation of a new crash test track, and also a wade pit, which is likely to test the wading capabilities of the Cybertruck. Follow along with me as I dive into these exciting updates. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. Tesla currently has a crash test lab in Fremont, California, but with Gigafactory Texas producing the Model Y and with Cybertruck production beginning, it is way more efficient, especially with the development of a new vehicle, the Cybertruck, for Tesla to have their own test track, crash test track at Gigafactory Texas as well. On July 31st, Joe Tegmeyer captured this drone footage and confirmed based on an official document he found that this structure is indeed a crash test track. Interestingly, this document refers to this as a temporary track. So this may primarily be here for the development and testing of the Cybertruck in the coming months. Ultimately, I do think it makes sense for Tesla to have some kind of crash test lab, similar to what they have at their Fremont facility here at Gigafactory, Texas but maybe that is going to be at a different part of the factory in the future and this is just temporary or maybe the structure over it is temporary, who knows for now and that it will stay here but it will have other things built around it. Either way, I think this is very interesting and very exciting to see this. I will put a link to the full video, which I encourage you to check out. And if you're not already subscribed to Joe Tegmeyer's YouTube channel, you definitely need to. When it comes to Cybertruck crash testing, back in April, Tesla posted a teaser video of the Cybertruck being crash tested at what I assume to be their Fremont crash testing facility. As you likely know, Tesla has a very strong emphasis on the safety of their vehicles and they run their own state-of-the-art um, crash testing lab in Fremont. There, they analyze vast amounts of data, not only from the crash tests that they do at the lab, but also from computer simulated crash tests. And they gather real world crash data um, from their fleet of connected vehicles. The Tesla engineers are able to take all this data, once again, from these various sets and engineer their vehicles specifically for the way that crashes happen in the real world situations. And they can also tailor their various tests that they do on these vehicles in the crash lab um, based on some of that real world experience and the simulated crash tests on their computer. So Tesla has a very strong emphasis on safety and they also have a state of the art facility with very brilliant smart engineers, obviously, um, we know this because the end results are very safe products. In the middle of the crash track that is being installed at Gigafactory Texas, you can see the channel where the cable will be installed that will pull the vehicle during crash tests. This action can be seen in this Tesla YouTube video um, showing their crash lab in Fremont. Now, once again, since this crash test track at Gigafactory Texas is listed on the document as temporary, um, so it apparently is not a permanent structure here. Um, I believe this is primarily here as they introduce the Cybertruck. They're going to be doing quite a few uh, crash tests on the vehicle in the coming months. And I believe this is primarily here for that vehicle. And I have no doubt that the Cybertruck will be an extremely safe vehicle. And I'm almost certain that it will be Tesla's safest vehicle yet. And the reasons why I believe this comes down to several things. First of all, um, it's a larger vehicle. And generally speaking, larger vehicles like a big truck, they have more room and more capabilities to protect the passengers inside. Now, sometimes larger vehicles do have an issue with rollover risk. But of course, with an electric vehicle like the Cybertruck, you have the battery with a lot of weight, very low. And um, this allows it to not tip over as easy as, say, a regular SUV or a regular truck. So that should be minimized and the size of the vehicle should make a difference. But also the fact that it will have a structural battery pack, which has been confirmed by this image that Tesla shared in their Q2 2023 investor update letter. You can see here that in this image of the Cybertruck frame, you can see that there's an open floor like the standard range all wheel drive Model Y, which is equipped with 4680 batteries and a structural 
battery pack. When you have a structural battery pack, obviously even any battery pack there at the bottom of the floor does add rigidity, but a structural battery pack, I would assume adds even more rigidity there to the bottom of the vehicle because of the structural nature of that pack. So I believe in side impacts, um, the Cybertruck will have an increased rigidity due to that structural battery pack. Another reason why I believe the Cybertruck will perform very well in crash tests comes down to the vehicle frame itself. As Sandy Monroe and Corey Steuben recently pointed out in a video that was published on the Monroe Live YouTube channel, where Sandy and Corey were analyzing some leaked Cybertruck frame images, the side A and B pillars of the Cybertruck do feature quite a bit of reinforcement, which obviously should lead to good side crash test safety in the Cybertruck. In addition to that, a typical vehicle has aluminum stamped panels on the exterior of the vehicle, whereas the Cybertruck is going to have stainless steel panels instead. Now we're not completely sure exactly how the exoskeleton design is still going to be implemented in with a typical uh, frame that we see here in these images of the Cybertruck. Once again, this is not exactly what we expected when it comes to what the frame would look like with an exoskeleton design. But as I've mentioned previously, I still believe that the stainless steel um, exterior that's going to be connected to this frame here, I believe it still will be structural in nature and it will still add to the rigidity of the vehicle and help improve say like payload capacity. But I also believe it will add to rigidity when it comes to crash testing. Um, so I believe the stainless steel is going to be a lot stronger than the aluminum would be normally with a stamped panel. And I believe that's going to add to the crash safety of the Cybertruck. In addition to all that, once again, Tesla has a strong emphasis on safety. So when they engineer a vehicle, safety is front of mind. And I have no doubt that the engineers, as they um, engineered the Cybertruck and as they continue to tweak it here as they're building release candidates, I have no doubt that safety was one of their primary focuses for the design of the Cybertruck. So once again, when you wrap all this up, it's exciting that Tesla is building their own crash test track, but also once again, it shows that Tesla has a strong emphasis on safety, and I believe the Cybertruck will be no exception. Now beyond the crash test track, near that track at Giga Texas, Tesla is also installing a waiting pit where they can test the waiting capabilities of their vehicles. While I have no doubt that Tesla will test other vehicles at this waiting uh, track, I'm assuming that this is being primarily built with the Cybertruck in mind. I believe the Cybertruck will be an off-roading beast, and I believe Tesla will want it to be very capable and not be outdone by vehicles like the Rivian R1T, which is very impressive off-road, and that means waiting depth as well. Now beyond that, on July 31st once again, Joe Tegmeyer captured um, another equipment delivery outside of the 4680 battery manufacturing section of Gigafactory Texas. But unfortunately, there were not enough clues on the crates themselves to know what these machines are, even with one of them uncrated because it was still covered with plastic. Now, previously on July 14th, Joe Tegmeyer shared these images on Twitter of battery equipment that was delivered uh, to Giga Texas. And as I mentioned in that previous video, this is almost certainly battery can manufacturing equipment made by a company called Schuler. And we are assuming this based on a label that was on the outside um, wrapping of this particular equipment. In addition, on July 15th, Joe shared these images on Twitter, looking into the 4680 battery production area at Gigafactory, Texas. And as I also discussed in a previous video, this is indeed second generation 4680 battery equipment. So putting this all together and adding in this new equipment delivery, we know that Tesla is using next generation 4680 battery equipment at Gigafactory, Texas. We also know that eventually there will be at least four battery manufacturing lines um, working at Gigafactory Texas. We don't know how many lines that Tesla currently has running at Gigafactory Texas manufacturing batteries, but once again, eventually there will be four. Now the battery can manufacturing equipment, when I've talked about that in a previous video, I talked about um, that new equipment deliveries at the 4680 battery manufacturing section of the factory um, our confirmation to me that Tesla is finishing 
um, more of the battery manufacturing lines. So this is really good news once again that Tesla is really beginning to ramp up 4680 battery production and means that they're getting ever closer to the theoretical designed maximum of this factory once again, which should eventually with four lines be able to produce 100 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. So these new equipment deliveries once again are a great sign. And I'm really thankful that Joe Tegmeyer um, was able to capture these and able to share these on his YouTube channel. If you're not yet subscribed to Joe Tegmeyer's YouTube channel, once again, I recommend that you go check that out and subscribe. And I will link to that in the video uh, description below. Also, I'd love to know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Do let me know what you think. And I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.